Hello, everybody. Welcome to my preview of Intermediate Accounting. This has been updated for the fall of 2022. My disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are those of the author only and not the author's employers or affiliated organizations, including but not limited to Irvine Valley College, the South Orange County Community College District, or California State University at Fullerton. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. Uh, this presentation is copyright uh, 2008 to 2022 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved and any distribution is strictly prohibited. Okay, <clears throat> so if you are taking intermediate accounting, so if you're taking intermediate accounting, you're here for a very good reason. You want to become a CPA. If you're taking intermediate accounting for the pleasure of taking accounting, I guess you can do that too, but you really want, if you're gonna work in accounting, you want to become a CPA. More important than a master's degree, why is it more important than a master's degree? Because you have to take this test. Now let's go through and kind of see, well, what is the exam look like? Now with the CPA exam, there are four different parts. There's financial auditing, regulation, and business. Financial is by far the worst because it's got like 10 different sections, auditing six, reg is eight, and then business is going to be about six different components. But if we take a look over here in terms of financial of these 10 components, well, these last three over here are all about governmental accounting, right? So this is going to be covered in an advanced accounting course. But as far as like the other ones go, when we look over here, revenue recognition, standards and conceptual framework. This is all coming from intermediate accounting. And we look over here, notes to financial statements, subsequent events, segment reporting, SEC reporting requirements. Again, you're gonna see a lot of this in intermediate, cash and cash equivalents. This is all pretty much intermediate accounting, right? So all of the things you're gonna be learning, you'll be getting tested on on the CPA exam. Now, coming over here, this particular segment over here, which is F4, consolidations are generally going to be covered in an advanced accounting class, as well as over here. <laughs> and now we're getting back to, now we're going through and getting back to some of the asset topics like goodwill and impairment. So as we go over here throughout the modules, like mini exam, now we get to liabilities. This is all included in intermediate accounting. Leases, this is intermediate accounting. Income taxes, this is also intermediate accounting. All these parts over here in terms of, you know, F through F7. So of FAR, of, and if we're looking here at Becker in terms of their 10 modules, seven of them, relate to um, intermediate accounting, or six and a half of them relate to intermediate accounting with these last three going to governmental and not-for-profit. So as we look at the CPA exam, which is really what you want to be getting yourself, it's hopefully it's going to be a review and not you're learning it for the first time. That's why this class becomes so overly important. It's a little bit about me. I've been teaching accounting since fall of 2013, part-time, full-time since uh, 2014. I've taught intermediate uh, for, oh, since the fall of 2016, I taught intermediate accounting for the last, first time uh, last semester at uh, the California State University at Fullerton, and I'm currently teaching it now for IBC. I also taught the second semester of intermediate, and I'll talk a little bit about that um, for IBC this last spring semester. Okay, so, but really what is intermediate accounting? So I, I've previewed for you what the CPA is going to require you to do, but really what is it? Well, we've learned, we've taken lower division accounting, you know, a class, financial. It usually lasts in a semester. You cover everything. You start with uh, going through and entering transactions and hopefully you're ending up with a statement of cash flows. But what is intermediate? So intermediate is we're taking what we learn in financial and doing a deeper dive. It should be a very challenging course. If it's not challenging, what does that mean? Well, if it's all multiple choice and I can check it, you're going to pay for it here. And I'm talking to students right now that are in my ethics class 
and they're like going, I don't know what's going on. And you got to go through and relearn it. Now you can go through and relearn it when you take the CPA exam. But if you're working 70 hours a week, if you want it to be a review, right, we're in school, let's just try to get it through. So over here, one of the hardest parts, and it's one of the biggest components of FAR. And by the way, once you reach intermediate accounting, you've reached the top of the mountain, there's really nowhere else to go, right? Once I've gone through and done it, I'm pretty much, I'm there. So to be successful in intermediate, what do you have to do? Well, the first question you want to ask yourself is, is you want to be honest with yourself. And then when was the last time that I took financial accounting? What type of financial accounting instructor did I have? Did I just get multiple choice questions or was I required to solve problems? One of the really important things about problem solving is that when you go and look at the CPA exam, and we come right over here, we say, look at, uh, let's go over here to say like inventory. And we go over here to the task-based simulations. On these task-based simulations, like for example, over here, you've got to basically go through company produce purchases inventory and then in four batches and then goes through and then sells them what's the weighted average, what's weighted average perpetual, right? So all those different things are moving average, right? So you're going to have to know how to go through and calculate the numbers. If you checked it in financial accounting uh, and you got an A, that's great, but you're going to have to learn the material when you get to the CPA exam because there is no CHEG for the CPA. So there is, well, there's the Becker and Rogers CPA review and Glime and a few other ones, but they don't have the, like, you're going to have to figure it out on your own. So it's really about when you get there, how are you going to be successful? So if your financial education was inadequate or your financial accounting education was inadequate, what you can do is you can, uh, if you want to contact me, I can send you my homework packets from financial accounting. It's absolutely free. I'm not trying to sell you anything. But if you need that material to brush up on the financial, it's extremely important that you go through and acknowledge what your challenges are. Now, to give you an example, when I taught intermediate for Fullerton in spring, um, Cal State Fullerton requires that I have a certain GPA. They don't want everybody to get an A, and I understand that, but they have certain things. And you should be very aware of that when you take any class. So when I was going through and teaching for them, I, I started with 45 students. I ended with 28 students. And the 17 students that dropped, when a student drops my class, I want to know well, was it me? Was it something that I did that, you know, the class is hard, but did I not give you the material to prepare? And the overwhelming answer that I got from students is that they didn't know how to prepare financial statements. Now, to be fair, there were some of those students that had, they recognized their challenge, which was they hadn't, they had more multiple choice questions. So they went through the homework packets that I provided from lower division accounting, and they did really well in the class. But again, you need to understand if your instructor, how is your instructor going through and teaching the course, right? So go through and use homework packets. And the reason is, is when you start looking at intermediate, your very first exam, if you're using KISO, should be going through and reviewing basic financial statement creation. And so this is a huge problem because during the pandemic, especially so much stuff was online, you've got connect, you've got Wiley plus. And the problem with those is that with Chegg, Course Hero and other resources, students really, you're just not learning how to do it. I personally believe that you be, should be physically writing everything out. You're committing it to muscle memory because accounting is a skill, but when we were looking at financial accounting, so it's gonna be generally, it's obviously, it's gonna be broken up into two semesters or three quarters, but you're generally, your first semester is going to kind of look like um, right over here, right? Basics, you know, going back to like, can you go through and, uh, can you go through and prepare financial statements? 
you know, what's now well, once we kind of know that you know the basics, then we start looking at new topics. We're going to discuss, we're going to look at discontinued operations. What happens when we have a restatement on retained earnings? How does that work? Uh, we're also going to be looking at the balance sheet and cash flows. We're going to be looking at some present value concepts. And again, if you took bonds in your lower division financial accounting and you had to use the present value of a dollar and then the present value of an annuity of a dollar, this chapter will be much easier for you. But if you didn't get that education, just recognize it as you're going through. Revenue recognition over here, you've got, you know, it's a whole new game with revenue recognition. Generally, when you took lower division accounting, you probably said, oh, it's realized and realizable and earned, but there's actually five steps to, rec to doing it. Then we go into cash and receivables, right? So now we're kind of heading down the balance sheet, cash and receivables. Um, so accounts receivable, fat AR factoring, that's going to be new. Uh, valuation of inventories, dollar value LIFO, inventory errors, uh, lower of cost or market, gross profit and retail methods. And then we get into the acquisition and disposition of property, plant, and equipment, um, impairments, depreciation, intangible assets. How do we deal with R&D costs? And then with investments. Now, I'm going to say something about investments is because the CPA exam, like this part over here, is pretty much no longer being tested on the CPA exam, right? So this part over here, not going to be on the CPA exam. So your instructor may or may not go through it. I certainly am going through and de-emphasizing it and choosing to emphasize other matters. But again, if it's something you want to go through and learn on your own, you can certainly go through and do that. Now, going over here to semester two, okay? So the second semester, so we've kind of gone through and covered all the asset sides. Now we're going over to the liabilities and equity. So we get to current liabilities non-current liabilities and this is where it kind of gets a little bit tricky and especially it's very important that you have that present value base right over here liquidating dividends stock dividends treasury stock dilute of securities and earnings per share this is awful okay this is going to be one of the more challenging parts in terms of how do you go through and comp compute fully diluted earnings per share when we get over here to pensions right? Pensions is no longer being tested on the CPA exam. So I generally, when I taught it in the spring of 2022, I generally de-emphasize that. But when it comes to accounting for income taxes, with that part, and then also with leases, what's interesting is when I taught these chapters, what I did was, because I, for me, I was kind of like going, this is kind of relatively new to me, um, because I just hadn't seen it in a long time. Well, it's not just going through and computing it because I've been more of a board member than actually going through and doing the work. But if you go through over here and you kind of take a look at leases, right? So I went through and basically taught leases and income taxes uh, essentially from the, uh, basically from Becker. Um, I used their material pretty heavily and it was actually excellent. So if you're getting stuck on leases or on deferred income taxes, which are two of the harder topics, uh, Becker can be a great resource. I'm sure Roger is just as good. Um, but like with Wiley, if it seems to be a little bit too technical on those parts, I would kind of go through and look at the CPA review material. Going over here um, is to accounting changes and error analysis. That's basically... You know, what's new is, you know, this is going to be pretty much be a new chapter in terms of how do we deal with errors and a change in accounting principles, a statement of cash flows. Uh, pretty much the only thing you're going to see new here is going to be the direct method. Again, if you were not asked to prepare a statement of cash flows using the indirect method when you were taking financial accounting, I would just be mindful that this is going to be a lot harder for you. So what's more important for you to do is to like, look, accounting is a skill. If you want to become a CPA, you're going to need to know how to do this stuff. So again, feel free to email me, message me. I'm more than willing to send you over my homework packets. Over here, full disclosure and financial reporting. Uh, this also is going to be another brand new uh, chapter for you in terms of going through and looking at it. So when we look at 
the two semesters on an overall basis. The one that it should be harder for most students is going to be the second semester. And it's just because you're dealing now with dilutive earnings per share, you're dealing with some troubled debt restructuring, some zero interest bearing notes, interest being issued between dates, leases, income taxes, uh, cash flows. It can be this part over here is definitely going to be the harder semester. Not that this semester isn't as hard, but it's just, it's not the same as this one. This one's much harder because you just haven't really had as much exposure to it from 1A as you have, say, over here from Accounting 1A. So um, thank you for being here today. I want to really wish you the very best of luck as you're going through on your intermediate accounting journey. The one thing I do have for you, um, if you go through and you look at my YouTube channel, so on my YouTube channel, if you're using the Kiso and Weingant textbook, so right over here, if I'm using the Kiso and Weingant textbook, what I have are playlists. So if you come over here and you say, go ahead and take a look at the playlist that I have, let me just go ahead and find one. Okay, so right over here. So this is chapter eight, which is going to be, I'm going to have to, I'm going through and redoing these because of the change of additions. But if you're looking for exercise or problem walkthroughs, I have these available for the Wiley textbook. They've been kind enough to allow me to go through and to use their material. They believe that there's a value to it rather than just students going up and looking on Chegg. But again, these videos are here to help you. If you're taking a class using Wiley, and you don't understand something and say, hey, guy, can you make a video? I'll absolutely do it if I have the time. So please, 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 uh, you know, you know, just the most important thing when you're taking this class is to make sure that, you know, when you are, you know, when you take any class, make sure you understand how your professor is going to test you, right? Is it going to be multiple choice questions? Is it going to be problem-based questions or is it going to be a combination of both? Understand, try to understand, well, how is the instructor using a test bank? Are they actually going to, and I have a huge issues with that because they're all available on Chegg or Course Hero. Um, is the instructor going to go through and use a test bank or are they going to write their own questions? My own intermediate accounting experience when I was at UC Santa Barbara is that I did well my first semester and then I had an instructor that just totally kicked my you know what. And um, this third quarter that I took at UC Santa Barbara, I kind of figured it out. And a big, big way of figuring that out is finding the old exams that were on file at the library at the school and going through and doing those tests repeatedly. It's the handwriting out of your solving problems. It's the handwriting out of the book solutions, understanding it, the more you write it, you're learning that skill. So my biggest suggestion to you, don't have a stylus, get blank pencil and paper, physically write it out. And that's really gonna be the best way you're gonna learn intermediate accounting. If I can help you on your journey, feel free to reach out to me, uh, leave a comment below. I have other videos. Um, I'm just going to pause real quick and put my email on this. If you need to reach me, feel free to reach out to me directly at 1812cpa at gmail.com and I will do whatever I can to help you. Uh, but again, it's, it's a very, very challenging class, right? It's harder than tax. Tax, you're really not going to understand until you get some real experience. I was in my tax class. I'm like going, dude, I have no idea what's going on. But after I worked for a bit and then went to law school, I totally got it. Or I, I understood it better. Um, auditing is kind of like an offshoot of intermediate, but it's really, it's very different, a little bit more procedural. Um, when you're looking at governmental or not-for-profit, the way they do things is so bizarre. Wouldn't worry about that one. Um, and then lastly, what else? Government not for profit, eh. and then forgetting something, tax reg. Yeah, there we go. But intermediate is generally looked at as by far, and then there's cost accounting. Um, if you suffered with me through my managerial accounting class, you probably will be okay. But 
again, when you're looking at that cost accounting is tested on BEC. So again, when you're looking at the exam, what I would really truly encourage you to go through and do is when you're looking at intermediate accounting is just do a self-assessment. See where you are from your class. If you're not there, get there before you start intermediate because this class is very, very challenging. It's It should be, if it's not challenging, what's gonna happen is when you get over here and start studying for this, this is when you're gonna be, uh, this is not gonna be pleasant because again, you wanna spend the time now, you wanna learn it now so that when you get to the CPA exam, it's a lot easier. So in any event, I want to thank you for being with me here today, and I look forward to seeing you on future videos. Please uh, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you on the next video.